Okay, this video is obviously a recording. Um, the video didn't pick up the sound the first time, and then the second time it didn't pick up, or the application stopped working. So I'm going to try to do this one again. Um, so for the first topic in module 39, it says using a calculator to evaluate natural and common logarithmic expressions. Now natural logarithms are when the base is E and they look like this, LN. And common logarithms are when they're base 10 and then they don't show a base at all. It just says log and there's no base shown at all. So if the base is invisible, it's base 10. And why is it 10? Because we count in base 10, right? Um, so let's go ahead and try this one. You do have a button on your calculator. It does have both L and log on the same button and so um, before I try the problems I'm going to show you what goes on when you click this button so the first time you click it it'll pop in LN because LN is first if I click it again though without typing anything in the parentheses it'll automatically change to the common log so you click the button once if you want um, the natural log and then you click the button twice if you want the common log and for this first example, I do need the common log, so I'm going to leave it there like that. Then I'm going to type in the fraction 5, 6, close my parentheses, and hit enter. Oh, I forgot to type in 6. There we go. And then I just rounded it to the nearest thousandth. So tenths, hundredths, thousandths, the 1 did not change the 9. So my answer was 0 0.079. For this problem, we're going to type the button only one time to keep it as LN and then type 25.9. Close the parentheses, hit enter. Tenths, hundreds, thousandths, the two is not going to affect the four. So the answer we have here is 3.254. Now the next problem says converting logarithmic and exponential form. Now the book or Alex itself and this little pamphlet that I've given you both have the formula on how to convert however I like to use special letters because they help me identify the different parts of um, the problem so here they have the formula and notice that they say y equals log base a of x means the same thing as x equal to log base a of y okay so they use the certain letters and then if you look at the log the base has to be positive and the x has to be positive um so over here though In Alex, they use different letters, although they still have the same expression. So they use log base A, but instead of X, they put C, and instead of Y, they put B. And then in the algebraic, I mean the exponential expression, they have that same base A as the base of the exponential, but then a logarithmic is an exponent. So since this logarithmic expression equals B, that means that B is the exponent. And then, of course, the argument became C on the other side. And as we know from the logarithm, the base has to be positive and your argument has to be positive. Okay? I like to use different letters. I like to use B for base, A for argument, and X for exponent. Just because they make a little bit more sense to me so that when I convert it over into the other form, B is my base, X is my exponent, and A is the answer. Okay? Um, it just helps me when I'm converting things over. But I'll also show you another way to rewrite them. So I'm using this one here at the bottom so that I can identify my base, my argument, and my exponent. And sometimes you go from this side to this side, and sometimes you're given an exponential and you have to put it into a log form. And that's exactly what we have for this first example. This was the expression that was given, and they want us to rewrite it as a logarithmic expression. So the first thing to do is identify your base. So the base of this exponential part on the left-hand side is 6, so that's going to be my b. Then the exponent is 1, so that's going to be my x. 
And then what's on the other side is the A, and that's the six here. So you write log, base is the same, base six, and then think of it as these other two numbers switch sides. So originally the one was on the same side as the base. Now this number will be on the same side as the base. And then the one will be on the other side. And then always check your responses. A logarithmic should equal the exponent. So is that the exponent? It is the exponent. So this one is correct. Now let's look here. They want us to go in the reverse order. So they've given us the logarithmic expression and they want us to rewrite it as an exponential expression. So again, the first thing is to identify your base. So in this case, my base is four. My argument is one over 64. And then my exponent, because the logarithmic equals an exponent. So my exponent is negative three. So when I rewrite that, I'm gonna have my base as four, my exponent as negative three, equal to my argument, which was one over 64. Or you can do it the way I mentioned, which is a shortcut. The base will be the base of the exponential, and these two numbers will switch sides. So the one over 64 will now be on the right-hand side of the equation, and the negative three will be on the same side as the four, as an, excuse me, as an exponent. This topic is converting between natural logarithmic and exponential expressions. So remember, um, common log with no base is a base 10. The natural log ln with no base shown is log base e, okay? So if I wanna write this as an exponential, I have to know what the base is. And since the base is not evident in this form, what I've done is I've changed the form over and I know that ln means log base e. And notice that the argument did not change, it stayed a two, and what was on the right-hand side did not change, it's still a y, okay? All I did was change the form ln into log base e using its definition. Then we rewrite it. So the base here is e, that became my base for my exponential. And then these other two numbers switch sides. So y will be on the right-hand side of the equation. I mean, I'm sorry, two will be on the right-hand side of the equation and the y will now be with the base e. And so now the expression looks like this, e to the y equals two. Now be careful that you're not doing e y equals two. That's a multiplication. That's not an exponential expression. So make sure when you swap their sides that you're putting that y as an exponent. Once you have your base, you need to have your exponent. So now this problem says rewrite as a logarithmic expression. So here's the problem I've been given and they want me to rewrite. So I do see that it's a base e, so I know it'll be a log base e, but then these two guys need to switch sides. So now the x needs to go on the same side as the e, and the seven needs to come to the other side. So the x is on the same side with the e, and the seven has gone to the right-hand side. And remember that log base e can be written as the natural logarithmic of x equal to seven. Now here it says evaluating expressions. Now some of them you may be able to do in your calculator, specifically only the ones that say ln of a number, or log of a number. Those are the only two you can type in a calculator. So this one I could type in my calculator. I just grab the calculator, type in log of 100, and it'll tell me that the answer is two. But I cannot do that technique over here because it has log base two. So I'm gonna show you how to do the problem and then we're gonna use this one as um, another example for more practice although we already know what the answer should be. So for the first one, what we do is if we don't know what log two, one over two, oh, log base two of a half equals, is we just put an X because it's unknown at this point. But now that you have an entire equation, 
you can rewrite that entire equation using the definition of a logarithm. So I can rewrite this whole equation as an exponential. So my base is two, hence my base is two, and then the x and the one half will switch sides. So the x will become my exponent and the one half will become the answer on the right hand side. Then it's just a matter of either guess and check or um, really analyzing what you have here. So I realized that with a base of two down here, they didn't really multiply. They didn't square it or cube it or fourth power or anything. It's just going to be a one exponent in order for it to stay a two. However, it has gone downstairs, right? Here it's a whole number two and here now it's a two underneath the fraction bar. That tells me that the exponent needs to be negative, okay? Similarly, if this were a one-fourth, I would know it would have to be a negative, but then it would have to be a square because of the four. The only way to get four is two squared is four. So this would have to be a negative two. A square to get the four and a negative to get the one-fourth, okay? But in this case, it's negative one. And if you want to check it, type in your calculator, two to the negative one, does that equal one half? And when I type two to the negative one in my calculator, it does come out to equal one half. So this is the correct answer here. But in Alex, all you do is type in the number, not X equals, because there is no X in the problem to begin with. So just type in the answer negative one. Same thing here. Even though I know the answer, I'm going to pretend that I don't. So remember that log with no base is a base 10. I kept my argument the same, but I don't know what this equals, so I put in a 10. Now that I have a whole equation, right? I have two sides of the equation. I can convert this over to the exponential form. So the base is 10, the exponent is x, and then the argument becomes the answer on the other side. Now, what exponent would have to go here in order for me to get 100? Again, guess and check or analyze. 10 to the 1 is going to stay 10. 10 squared is 100, which means that that exponent would have to be 2. And check your answer. Is 10 squared equal to 100? It is. So the exponent does need to be 2. So the answer in Alex is just going to be 2. Remember, what you're doing is you're looking for the exponent. A logarithmic is equal to an exponent. So you're telling yourself, if I have two to some exponent, how will I get one half? What will this little exponent have to be so that I could get one half? Same thing here. You're saying 10 to what exponent is going to give me 100? Well, 10 squared is going to give me 100. And that's why the answer here, or the exponent here, is two. Okay, here we have translating the graph of a logarithmic function. I think I'm going to stop the video here just because I want to double check that it's recording it because this is the third time that I've tried to record it. Um, and I'll pick up with these topics in the next video.